Hey there AI enthusiasts, welcome to episode 9 of AI Practitioner Exam Bytes. Before we get into today's topic, let's look at the review question from yesterday about which combination of AWS services would be suitable for this use case. The correct answers are A, Amazon Lex, which is used to build the conversational interface, the chatbot, for customer interactions. C, Amazon Translate, which enables the chatbot to understand and respond in multiple languages and D, Amazon Transcribe, which can convert voice messages into text for further analysis. Today, we're going to move into the last task statement 1.3 in the fundamentals of AI and ML domain. Describe the ML development lifecycle. In particular, in this episode, we're covering the components of a machine learning pipeline. Looking at the exam objective, describe components of an ML pipeline, for example, data collection, exploratory data analysis or EDA, data pre-processing, feature engineering, model training, hyperparameter tuning, evaluation, deployment, and monitoring. Understanding this process is crucial to understand machine learning and also crucial for the AWS certified AI practitioner exam. So let's break it down. An ML pipeline, it's kind of like a recipe for creating and deploying machine learning models. It has several key ingredients. First, assuming that we have decided the problem we are trying to solve is suitable to machine learning, we commence data collection. Now, this involves gathering relevant data from various sources in order to train the model. Keep in mind that the quality of your data can make or break your model. So this is a crucial step. Next, we conduct what we call exploratory data analysis or EDA. Think of this like getting to know your data. We examine its structure, patterns, and potential issues. Now that we've met our data, we need to engage in data pre-processing. Data pre-processing allows us to clean up our data. As much as we might like to think that data is nicely formatted, balanced, and complete, that's rarely the case. Real-world data is often very messy, so we have to do things like handle missing values, remove duplicates, or convert data types. Following data pre-processing, we might realize the data can be modified or transformed to help our model learn better, such as combining certain data items, or perhaps modifying the numerical scale or range of values. This is called feature engineering. Once we've got all of our data in order, we can now commence model training. This is where the magic happens. We feed our prepared data into our training algorithm and it will learn all of the patterns in our data. Now this training process is not set and forget. We have certain levers and settings we can use to modify and influence the training process. These settings are called hyperparameters and the process is known as hyperparameter tuning. It's like finding the perfect settings on your camera for the best shot. That's what we're trying to do here. Find the perfect settings for our training to output the best model. All right, so now we've completed our training and it's time to see how well our model performs through a process known as evaluation. We use various metrics to assess the model's accuracy and effectiveness at meeting the original requirements that we set out to meet. Now, if we're happy with our model's performance, we then deploy our model.
And once our model is deployed, we can start making predictions on new data through the process known as inferencing that we've talked about in previous episodes. Now you might think our model's deployed, our job is done. Well, our job is not over yet. We need to continuously monitor our model's performance. And this is because data in the real world is constantly changing. So we need to be ready to retrain or adjust the model if needed. And if we look at the whiteboard here, we can see that right now this pipeline is reasonably linear, but that's not always the case. We often loop back to earlier stages as we refine our model, such as, for example, going from monitoring back to training. If we need to update, our model due to changes in real world data, or perhaps going from hyperparameter tuning back to training, if we wanna try different combinations of hyperparameters to see what is going to result in the best model coming out of training. Let's do a quick review question on today's topic. Which of the following steps in an ML pipeline involves creating new features or transforming existing ones to help the model learn better? Is it A, data collection, B, feature engineering, C, data pre-processing, or D, exploratory data analysis or EDA? Post your answer in the comments and we'll review that in our next episode. In the meantime, that's it for today. See you in our next episode where we'll be talking about AWS services and features which can support each stage of the ML pipeline that we outlined today. See you then.